Hello and welcome to We Never Met, the podcast where I have an interesting stranger on every single week. And this week it is Oliver. How's it going? Known but known on Instagram as Fixie, is that right? Correct. Is that how you say it? Mm-hmm. Why why'd you go with that name instead of your actual name? Um because I feel like Oliver Clark is a pretty pretty cool name. It, yeah, I mean yeah. that's a it's a family name, I guess you could say. Like yeah. my dad's from England, so um but uh, yeah, the reason that I went with Fixie was because um, when I first started my Instagram account, I was um, riding a fixed gear bike every, oh. everywhere for like, that was my main mode of transportation. So like, is that tough? It's tough to ride a fixed gear bike, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Especially if you hit like a hill or something. Mm-hmm. It was a lot. <laughs> it was a lot of exercise. I was probably riding like 50 to 60 miles a week. Jeez. Mm-hmm. But yeah. yeah, I was in the best shape of my life. It felt great. Is that a... Uh... How so? How old is the Instagram account? Like a couple of years? Um, well, uh, yeah. I mean, I've been. I, I started a new account. I felt like I got stuck in a, a creative rut where okay. I just guess I kind of felt like I started to become a slave to my followers. Okay. And so I was not um, pursuing like things creatively that interested me. Sure. More so as like I felt like I was. Pro- I felt the need to produce content that, that they like that my followers would like versus yeah. like what i enjoyed so before for what was how many followers did you have on that i account? had about eight thousand. wow that's a before. lot before mm-hmm. and you just like that's that's a crazy thing to walk away from too because if you're like building that and like right you know you could make money and do like well, that as yes. a job eventually so basically what i did is like i i shut it down um yeah it just went inactive i kind of deactivated it okay um and it was deactivated for like a year and a half and i've been on my you know new account yeah, yeah, yeah. it's the same name as my old account i just switched the names over to a okay. fresh account you I know gotcha. without a whole bunch of fake followers but okay. um what i did is i reactivated it recently and oh. um I deleted all of the content that I'd posted on there and okay. I changed the name to Ollie and Annie Photography. Okay. Um, which is my Your new, new business. my new yeah. business. Yeah. So we now have a, a bunch of followers on there, which is great. Um, yeah. so we can uh, reach a, a broader spectrum of people. Yeah. So uh, we can go into that. Like what what uh, kind of spurred you to start a new business and kind of go down that route? Because you guys do photography for everything, right? Like anything. Oh, yeah. Like weddings, part, whatever anybody would want. Yeah, it's absolutely. not super specific, is what I mean. No, like not something. not really. I mean, I don't. I, I mean, I think that like there are certain things that we you know are more interested in taking sure. photos of those sure. than others. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, no, I mean, yeah, the photography in general is just something that interests us. Um, but to kind of get to the root of that, yeah. Um, I guess it was about like five or six months ago. Um, this is you know. I don't really, it's kind of a little bit embarrassing, but you know, I'm ha- really happy I <laughs> yeah, did it. Yeah. Um, I was uh, the um, operations manager at the Italian Community Center. Oh, cool. So I was just basically oversaw daily operations for um, sure. the uh, catering venues. Um, okay. So the banquet spaces for the Bartolotta restaurant group. Oh, okay. Um, we were in the middle of doing like a 700 person breakfast. Wow. And um, well, we, we weren't in the middle. We just kind of got into the tail end of it. But sure. we realized that, you know, there were um, 30 people who were dairy free um, that oh. we had forgotten to give them their fruit plates for oh, okay. um, for dessert because everybody else. I forgot what the dessert some was. Some dairy it had, product. It had, yeah. it had dairy. In yeah. It. Yeah. And we just completely forgotten. And it was like 45 minutes after, um, you know, the, the dessert service had happened yeah, yeah. that I just kind of realized. And I was like, whoa. Yeah. And then I just kind of like, I don't really know how to describe it. I went into the kitchen. Yeah. I went into the walk-in cooler and I was by myself and it yeah. was really cool. And I was yeah. just like, I was, it was quiet. The fan was going and I was yeah. just like, I can't do this. Yeah. This isn't me. This is... This is like I when I was a little kid, I wasn't like staring out the window at, you know, the birds and, you know, the trees and everything thinking like I want to, you know, cater 700 person like, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, like yeah, this yeah. is no like this is That's not, not the career path you the only envisioned. right like yeah. the only way that this is benefiting me is 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 by in that it's financially supporting sure. me. But other than that, I'm wasting my life doing something that 
is really of no interest to me. Yeah, and that's a, like a nine to five. So you're doing that like 40 hours a week, something oh, it, that you it was, don't it, like. It was more, more than, than four, that because I was salaried. Okay. So oh, yeah. when I, the first, I will never forget the first week that I started working there, they worked 75 hours. Oh my god! And that gosh. was my, that was my first, first week. week. Yeah. Right, and you know, you'd Don't think, even start slow. Right, yeah. and you know, you'd think, okay, we'll give them like maybe even less than 40 yeah, yeah, hours yeah, yeah. just so, you know, you can get, yeah, you know, yeah, kind yeah. of hit the ground running, get, yeah. you know, get used to things or sure. whatever, but like 75 hours, that <laughs> yeah, was like my care. first week. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, whoa, I was like, we agreed on a salary, but like, yeah. you're making me work twice, <laughs> yeah. twice the amount of hours. Yeah. Like, this is not going to work. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so it, it was, it was pretty high stress, I think yeah. from, from the, um, the outset, but, um, but yeah, I literally saw, I went up to, what do you I, think made that change in that, that, that one day? Like, what do you think like clicked in your mind? That was like, I mean, I'm it, done. I think it was, a it was build a build up. up. It yeah. was, it was probably a build up. Yeah. And I was just, I, and it's also kind of a service, like a service industry thing where, you know, you just, everybody talks to you like you are less than, sure. you know, yeah. because they, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, know that's you just mean. kind of like, even I was though a they may not, for a while, so I get that. Right. Like, yeah. like, even though they may not like genuinely think that you are less than, yeah. they talk to you like you're less than. Yeah. And that's just like very degrading yeah. to the human spirit, I feel like. Yeah. Um, yeah. And you can take it, you know, for like a couple weeks and then it starts to build more and more. And right. then you just start to internalize it and just get, right more mad right yeah right. absolutely and i think that um a lot of the frustration and the anxiety because it was a lot of anxiety yeah I you bet. know in that position like doing a 700 person breakfast you know yeah. i'm managing a staff of you know 15 to 20 employees yeah. and organizing them to hit everybody with service you know yeah. water everybody clear everybody's plates you know get coffee out there i mean yeah it's, there's it's a like lot having of steps. eight full restaurants yeah. in one exactly. In one area. Exactly. Yeah. It's like doing an entire night's worth of service yeah. at one time. Yeah. So I mean it's very stressful. Um, but yeah, I just I, I felt like that position was really starting to stifle my creativity. It okay. was starting to kind of just kind of put a damper on it in the in the sense of like You'd go home and be like, eh. Right. I don't want to do it. Like anything. by the time when the time I got home, I'd just be like, no, like yeah. I literally just want to eat, lay in bed, and eat crab rangoon. Yeah, like that's all I want. <laughs> yeah. That's all I want to do. Yeah. Um, so, so yeah. Uh, so I went up to my boss and I just said, "Hey, I need to talk to you privately." Mm -hmm. And I pulled him outside, and I just started crying. And yeah. I just said, "I can't do this anymore. Yeah. This is not me. I am not happy." Yeah. And um, you know, I, I. I have had to start, you know, uh, taking anti-anxiety medication. And yeah. I'm not really sure if, if it's because of this position sure. or if it's because of, you know, where I am in life yeah, or yeah. what it is. But I know that right now this job is not good for me. Well, that's good for you. That's, yeah. a, that's a hard thing to do. And he said, okay, so, you know, do you want to put in your two weeks or do you want to be done today? And I said, I'm going to be a hundred percent honest with you. I need to be done today. Like yeah. I need to like, just here are my keys. Yeah. I need to leave. Yeah. And that's what I did. And, um, I took a couple of weeks and I didn't really have a job. I just kind of relaxed. I just, you know, um, just, just spent time, um, focusing on self care. Yeah. Um, and was that hard for you to do? Cause I feel like if I, I'd be like, for, like scared a little bit. I mean, it would be hard for was. me to relax. Yeah. Right. It, it definitely was, but, um, I'm in a very, very fortunate situation right now to where I have a, uh, you know, a roof over my head and sure. I don't have to worry yeah. about that. Um, I'm living, you know, my, my girlfriend, my wonderful girlfriend and I, um, are living with her great aunt, um, oh, cool. who owns a duplex in Sherman park. That's nice. So she lives on the top floor and yeah. she was literally just using the first floor for storage. Oh. And I mean, it was, well, you know, there. yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, I was, right. so we approached her and we're like, you know, well, how about, you know, we, you know, we help you out around the house. We'll plow yeah. the snow in the winter. We'll mow the lawn, you know, we'll, yeah. you know, we'll take care of, you know, take care of, uh, you know, the cat, her cats because she's got a lot of cats. And <laughs> I mean, it just kind of became a trade. Yeah. So, we get to live there now um, for free. You know, yeah. she doesn't charge us rent or anything. Um, so, how is living there? Do, do you like it? Or? It's been really nice. Yeah. Um, uh, one thing that has happened since we lived there is that her aunt was diagnosed with um, terminal cancer. Oh, so um, which has has kind of necessitated us being there even more. Yeah, a little yeah, bit. For so, sure. um, it, it's nice to be close. Yeah, um, because that's that's uh, that's basically that's my girlfriend's mom. That's the way that. Yeah that relationship works. Sure. Yeah. So, um, well, I'm sorry to hear that. That's awful. 
I mean, she's gone into chemo and yeah. the um, cancer has shrunk by uh, two thirds. So oh. it's, you know, started to shrink. It's not curable, but yeah. um, it's responding very well. That's good. So that's, yeah. yeah, it's about as good of a diagnosis yeah, as yeah, we can yeah. get right now. Yeah, because uh, the only reason I asked that is because Sherman, you said Sherman Park, right? Mm-hmm. It kind of gets a bad rap sometimes as mm-hmm. being like kind of dangerous yeah. and not a very nice place to yeah. be. Um, I don't, I obviously don't live there, so mm-hmm. I don't know, but like, do you, you don't get that vibe at all, do you? No, it's really interesting. So her, um, we're just going to say her mom. So her mom, um, is actually a retired, um, homicide detective well, for, the, for the That's, city of Milwaukee. You don't, I don't never, I don't think I've ever met a person that does that. Yeah. I've I only seen yeah. it on TV. Homicide. And then she also did drug, uh, drug task enforcement. Wow. Um, so and, she's really in so there. Like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So she That's was crazy. there for a while. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, she's, I, I feel secure sure. there just yeah, for yeah, that yeah. reason. But then also it's really interesting. We live in a pocket of Sherman park yeah. that is like 95% Hasidic Jews. Oh, so I wouldn't even know that they were there. Right. Either. Yeah. So, you know, it's it's very, very interesting. Like on on the weekends, you know, you see them walking to sure. um, I'm, I, I'm assuming it's a synagogue yeah. um, in, you know, traditional clothing. And, you know, it's wow. very. Yeah, it's like it's yeah. almost like, you know, you you you're stepping back in time sometimes yeah. when you see them all yeah. walking down yeah, the street yeah, yeah. and just like this very, very traditional, you know, f- giant fur hats and all yeah. that stuff. So, yeah. Um, it's it's a very diverse community, and yeah. I think that that is probably like why I enjoy it. Like I feel yeah. at home. I don't yeah. like to be in like a very you know like um, sure like a, it, like a suburb it, exactly. <laughs> like I don't yeah. yeah I don't know. I enjoy that. That's cool. Yeah. So um, back to for, for like photography. When did you start, and like why? Um, initially were you always creative like as a young kid or yeah i mean i always enjoyed photography i guess i started taking pictures like honestly probably like when i was in like seventh grade was when i bought my first digital camera so probably that would have been like 2002 wow was when i got my first digital camera it was like two megapixels (laughs) super (laughs) blocky it was like yeah it was terrible yeah and i just like remember taking like close-up macro pictures of like turtles and like flowers (laughs) and bees and like whatever um but uh yeah i mean then like i kind of set it aside for a little bit it's always kind of like been like a hobby of mine but never something like i've like gone into like full force okay necessarily yeah um when i most recently got back into photography was um back home in st louis when i started my account fixie Mm -hmm. and i was really i really just started the account because i was riding my bike everywhere i saw more things because i wasn't in a car or in a bus and i didn't have that glass and metal like you know boxing me in yeah you know it's just free i was on a bike i could go wherever i wanted i could go on the sidewalks i could go on the grass you know so you just see a lot more yeah so i wanted to start taking pictures um of you know just what i saw um and one day i biked past um an abandoned hospital i saw that yeah in st louis that they were tearing down um, I mean, I saw the church, the abandoned church. Is it, did you there's just, a lot of yeah. abandoned stuff. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of You're it. from St. Louis, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So that's this, that's kind of my theme is like abandoned buildings and sure. stuff. Um, so I made a post on my Instagram and I just said, Hey, I'm thinking about going and exploring this abandoned hospital tonight. Yeah. Would anybody be interested in coming with me? Yeah. And a couple of people messaged back and we met up that night and we went and explored this like 12 story abandoned hospital in St. Louis. Wow. Um, and we took a bunch of pictures and we started posting the pictures and then we just started getting followers. Like people just started like following us because we were just like posting, you know, these pictures from inside these abandoned buildings and people were like, this is crazy. Like, what are you doing? Yeah. yeah, Especially at night. Like, why are you going in there at night? That's so scary. (laughs) Yeah. 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 I don't know. I mean, we're, and we're posting like all sorts of crazy pictures of like 50 gallon drums of like asbestos and like, you know, like all sorts of crazy stuff. And then we just started driving around and we, realized that there were abandoned buildings everywhere oh, yeah. um and so we just just started exploring them all i mean and there's schools there's so many schools abandoned schools in st louis there's probably like 10 to 15 abandoned schools in st louis Jeez. i mean full-size schools like yeah. high schools wow um i mean we would explore churches funeral homes i mean yeah. you name it like uh, hotels uh i mean just everything anything anything yeah, yeah. so where in st louis did you grow up uh webster groves did you like it? Like, was it? Um, yeah, I don't, it I don't was, think I've ever been was, to St. Louis. Uh, 
Yeah, St. Louis is very interesting. It's very segregated. Okay. Uh, similar opinion. to Milwaukee. Yeah, very yeah. similar to Milwaukee. Yeah. Um, but the area of St. Louis that I grew up in was is, is very affluent and mm-hmm. very white. <laughs> yeah. So I think that that's probably like part of it was that another th- part of it that interested me is that there's this imaginary line in St. Louis where it's like, you know, and it's, 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 if you ever go to St. Louis, you'll have yeah. to check it out. It's called Del Mar, Del Mar Boulevard. And like, once you just go like a block north of it, I mean, there's abandoned houses everywhere. Wow. And it's just like, you know, there are people, you know, sitting on, you know, front porches shooting up. I mean, it's just really bad. Yeah. But if you go like a block, a one block, south you have gated communities with like million dollar houses and like That's you know nuts. bmws outside it's, it's insane it's ridiculous like it's just it's that stark of a contrast that's crazy that it's it happens really, that quickly oh it's like two blocks like it's two blocks and like you go from like from like uh you know 85 percent college graduation to like five percent college graduation that's nuts i mean you go for yeah like house values are like thirty five thousand dollars on average to like eight hundred thousand dollars on average yeah and just like a two block difference is so, that do you think that's just uh, historical and it just kind yeah, of just i think mounted it's white and, flight yeah. i think a lot of it's white flight um but that was i guess growing up like we never really had a reason to go north of Del Mar. Yeah. Like we didn't. Like nothing that we ever needed was up there. Like yeah. Chuck E. Cheese's wasn't up there. <laughs> yeah, Walmart yeah, yeah. wasn't up there. Yeah. You know, like none of the restaurants that we went to were up there. Yeah. There just wasn't any reason for us to go up there, but that's sure. like half of St. Louis. Yeah. You know? So here I am in college and like 18, 19 years old, and I'm like, I have, you know, my own car. Yeah. And I'm not living at my parents' house. I'm living at, you know, the college dorms and I'm, kind of like in North St. Louis now, like that's where my college was, sure. was in the university of Missouri. St. Louis is in mm. North St. Louis. So I was up there. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, it was like right next to the highway, so I yeah. didn't have to like drive through sure. it all the time, but yeah. like I was exposed to it yeah. and it just made me interested. I was like, I've lived here my entire life and I have no idea what's up here. Yeah. And so I just started exploring and, uh, that's really what I think got me interested in taking pictures again was just documenting, um, the poverty, yeah. the, um, the abandonment, mm-hmm. um, it just, just the contrast in, uh, and the, the segregation that you can see just on that street, um, of Del Mar. Yeah. Um, so I did a series called North of Del Mar and, um, took pictures and interviewed people and, um, you know, went to, to like, you know, crack houses and wow. talked to prostitutes and yeah, I mean, it was really, really, um, some pretty crazy stuff. Yeah, I mean yeah. That, that has to be some intense, like mm-hmm. just stories from people and 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 just interacting with people that you know, like, are probably close to rock bottom. You know, and oh, yeah. they don't have any oh, yeah. options to like oh, do yeah. anything else. Oh yeah, which I mean, is, there was one guy that I interviewed um, who was living in a homeless encampment um, in downtown St. Louis, and like two months after I talked to him, his tent caught fire, and while he was inside, and he died. You know, that's unbelievable. I mean, he literally hit rock bottom. Yeah. You know, jeez. So. And and that's the craziest part to me is that people are like, yeah, you know, we're, we're fine. Right. That's for you, by the way, if you want it. Oh, is it really? Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, people are like, yeah, you know, it, it's not, you know, things are getting better and, and blah, blah, blah. And things are fine. And maybe in some places that's true, but like here in Milwaukee, it's like things aren't, things aren't that much better than they were. You right. know what I mean? Like I, I run a lot and, I ran from here to Franklin, which is like 20 minutes south. Oh, wow. And so I ran um, through like... On the Oak Leaf? Uh, no, I ran through the city. So okay. I ran through like Walker's Point and like oh, places wow. in there. And it was a similar kind of thing sure. where it was like a lot of abandoned stuff, a lot of people um, staring at me. You know, right. I don't think they see a lot of like just right. white dudes running through their neighborhood. Right. Um, a lot of places, especially like here in Milwaukee, and it's been documented a lot through like um, different reportings that like, it is so segregated still. And, um, yeah, I just, it's, it's pretty crazy. It is. And I think the thing that kind of drove me to want to document it and, um, to show people is that I felt like a lot of the people who had the power to do something about the problems in North St. Louis 
never had any reason to go there. Like they didn't, they didn't know that there was, there were problems. Oh. You know what I mean? Because it, it's sure. just like, it's out of it's sight, a, out of easy mind. Easy to ignore. Exactly. Yeah, because yeah. if you don't have any reason to go there, then it's not really bothering you, is it? Sure. It's yeah. not a problem that you have to deal with yeah. on a daily basis. Yeah. And it's very impoverished in North St. Louis. So yeah. I kind of wanted to expose that. And, yeah. you know, I, I, um, at one point actually had, um, a anonymous, uh, who someone who claimed to be a, a St. Louis city politician, yeah, threatening me really? over social media about the the photos that I was posting. What saying what like take them down um, or yeah, like yeah basically or I'm gonna have you arrested. Um, you for know, what? For, well for um, because I was taking pictures of people using drugs, oh. shooting shooting up heroin, oh, okay, smoking crack, sure. Um, so basically, I guess like promoting that or I, yeah. I don't really know. I don't know the legal how, ramifications how exactly. of that either. It never, yeah. it, it never developed into anything yeah. um, more than just a, a social media threat. But, you know, I, I think that I, I kind of hit a nerve, yeah. um, which was which was uh, a good feeling. But that's the thing that people need to do more of, you know, right. is like go there and like show that this is happening. Right. And it is real. Right. I mean, we can't just like bury, need help. Right. We can't just bury our heads, heads in the sand. That doesn't do anything. Yeah. Like the problem still exists. Yeah, like, exactly. Just we just ignore turn away it. And don't right. Look. It doesn't yeah. go away. Yeah. So, so uh, do you do any of that here in Milwaukee? Have you like explored in the more impoverished parts of, of Milwaukee and done any like photography like that? Yeah. So um, that's actually been what's interesting about, um, about I guess, me leaving my job is that yeah. what I've been doing in the meantime while um, Anissa and I are getting our business um, running up sure. and going is I've just been doing Uber Eats. Yeah. So I've just been literally just been doing food delivery. Um, but what's really interesting about it it's is that it's everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. Is that it takes me all over. Yeah. Like it, 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 it's exposing me to like different areas of the city that I've never seen before. Sure. Um, you know, just in the past three weeks, for example, I've found three abandoned churches. Like yeah. I'm really excited yeah, about I'm gonna that. Go back. <laughs> yeah. Mark. So, so yeah. So, I mean, it's helping me take, you know, find different places of interest that I might want to take pictures of. It's just, it's, it's helping me get a better feel for the city. And I think that yeah. that's a really cool thing. And I um, actually was have been thinking about that lately. Like if I ever move to another city, I think for the first couple of months, I would love to just do Uber Eats. Yeah. To just like get a, you know, better feel for the layout of the sure. city and, you know, just I, I learn the different restaurants and yeah. around town. And yeah, I just, I think that it's a really good way to learn a city. And like it forces you to explore. Exactly. And it pays you to yeah. do it. And it so, pays me too. Yeah. yeah. And if they don't show up after five minutes, I get to keep their food too. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, you can take it nothing off. wrong with that. <laughs> take so, it back. So yeah, um, is yeah. So I guess the your Instagram account. I mean, the photos you have are pretty amazing. Like Thank they're, you. I like they're photos that like I aspire to like take one day. That. Um, and you just traveled, not just, but like you were on the West Coast, mm -hmm. right? Um, where'd you go from? We flew into um, Portland, Oregon. Okay. I was then, just there too, yeah. Yeah, isn't yeah. it beautiful? Oh, it's I crazy. It, it's, it seems like a crime to take photos out there because it's just like you can just do this. <laughs> I know. And everything I know. looks good. Everything. Yeah. Everything. Um, so, yeah, so we flew into Portland and then uh, we rented a car. And we, so we stayed in Portland for two days and then we went down to Eugene. Um, and then we stayed in Eugene, Oregon for two days. Mm -hmm. And then from Eugene, we went to Crater Lake National Park. Okay. And then we camped there for two days. And then we drove down to the Redwoods. And then we spent one night in a hotel and one night camping down there in the Redwoods. And okay. then we went down, drove down to San Francisco and finished off in San Francisco. What was your favorite part? Like, oh, the Redwoods. By yeah. By far. I haven't gone there yet. Oh yeah, yeah. there it, it's unbelievable. Like I cried when I saw him the first time. Like I was driving down the road and I saw my first redwood and I just like just a tear just that, came down my face. They're massive. Well, it, it I mean it, it's just very humbling. Like it just makes you feel so small. Yeah, like, they're just thousands yeah. of years old. I mean right? they're just insanely yeah. yeah they're just insanely big. Yeah. yeah, when you take pictures like that, like when you went up the coast, is there a specific like? vibe that you go for like it, do you have like a style i guess or do you just kind of take pictures and just edit them how i don't you know i think i'm i think i'm probably my own worst critic okay. i mean i took probably like 3500 photos while oh i was gosh. while i was out west but yeah. i probably only posted like 15 yeah you know yeah yeah, yeah, like yeah i have so many photos yeah but i i just like i just 
uh, there will always, I, I don't know. I, I still haven't gone through all of them, but there sure. are a lot where I'll be like, oh, that's off just a little bit. Mm. And I don't want to post that. But yeah. I don't know. I guess my style is like, I just want to it to be like whimsical almost. That's, like yeah, that's kind of how I feel about want it. it to be like, where is that? I want people to just like want to know like, yeah. oh my God, like that's crazy. Where, where is he? Like, yeah. Yeah. Do I you, guess that's kind of like just the goal. Yeah. Cause some of the pictures, I mean, I'm just pumping you up here, but like some of the, <laughs> some of the pictures I look at and I'm like, is that even real? Like it doesn't look real. And there's a specific picture I have uh, in mind that uh, I forget the exact, but there's, it's, the sun is kind of coming through. There's a bunch of trees. I think it was when you were on the West coast. Um, I could pull it up later. Oh but. yeah, I know what you're talking about. That yeah. was redwoods. Yeah, 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 with the mist and stuff and yeah. the fog. And I'm like, yeah. geez, that doesn't yeah. even look like a real place. I know. Yeah, it's crazy. And that's how. That's why the redwoods were so amazing. Is that it's like, yeah, I don't know. I I I'm not necessarily a very religious person, but yeah. if I were to ever talk to God, that would be the place. That where you go. Oh yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. It would be hard not to. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's just yeah. You just it's just so humbling. It really is. Yeah. yeah. Um. And this is completely different, but I, I saw that you used to work. Where'd you used to work? Like before the like Bartolotta's and it, there was like a, you worked at like a shelter or something or volunteered at a shelter or. Um, so I, I've had a, a, a couple of jobs. Those were back in St. Louis. But, yeah. Um, I was working as a case manager for homeless and at risk youth. That's what I was. Yeah. Yeah. Was. So I was, I was a case manager for homeless and at risk youth in St. Louis. I had about like 15 kids on my caseload between the ages of like 13 and 20 to 21 um, okay. years old. How and, did you get into, how did you decide to do that and volunteer? Did um, you volunteer there at first? No, or I, I worked there. I worked there full time. Well, I have okay. a degree in social work. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, um, I went there. I had actually, the organization was Epworth Children and Family Services, and I had um, worked there part time during an off year of college. Okay. Um, I went my freshman year um, to Northland College, which is about five and a half hours north of here in Ashland, Wisconsin. Oh yeah, and I was studying outdoor Never education. Heard of it. Yeah, yeah, I was studying outdoor education, and um, I kind of just decided that was not for me came back to St. Louis. I took an off year mm -hmm. um, and I worked part time for Epworth Children and Family Services as a street outreach worker okay. um, working with homeless youth. Sure. Um, and that was what got me into um, social work. And I that was what made me I'm like, OK, this I love this. This is like a good fit for me. Yeah. So I'm going to go back to school for social work. So um, that's uh, what I went to school for. And then um, when I graduated, I was doing an internship for Lifeline, the suicide okay, um, prevention yeah. hotline. So I was a crisis intervention specialist there for two years. And then I switched over to um, being a case manager again with Epworth Children and Family Services. So what was that like, like working with, with kids like that? Was it, was it, was, it tough? Like, it was. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think the, the thing that's really frustrating is like when um, – because I, I would I would like describe myself as a helper, like a helper sure. type of person. And you want to help so much, like right. all the time. You right. can't turn it off. Is that the kind of? Well, it's not necessarily that you can't turn it off. It's that sometimes, you know, not just sometimes, like a lot of the time, I found that I wanted to help the kids that I was working with more than they wanted to help themselves. Sure. So, you know, for example, you know, they would come to you and their primary um, complaint would be, you know, that they were hungry and that yeah. they, you know, didn't have access to food and, you know, you'd offer to drive them to, you know, a food pantry sure. or, you know, set up an appointment for them to get, you know, sign up for food stamps yeah. and they just wouldn't show up. And it wouldn't be a matter of they didn't have transportation to get to where you were. It was, yeah. you could, I would drive to their house and wait in their driveway oh. or, you know, the house that sure. they were staying yeah, at yeah, yeah. Um, but I, or, or, or the shelter that they were staying at it's to pick them up to transport them and okay. they just wouldn't show up okay so it it did become you know very frustrating yeah um, i bet but i think that another part of that is that social workers are underpaid and overworked oh for sure so and know, underappreciated right yeah. and i think that ultimately that was what kind of um kind of pushed me away from um social work at least in st louis um yeah because i can imagine like you it's it's that like I, I don't, I don't have kids. So, but my assumption is like, if your kid is going through something and you're like a good parent and you're like, I just want to help you, but they like, they don't want your help, but right. like, I just want to help right. you. Like, come on. It's very frustrating. Yeah.